Hey everybody and welcome back. Today we're going to continue looking at the NPCs of Stardew Valley. Last time we talked about Sam and his odd place in the world as a father figure to Vincent, kind of, who is at the same time very immature himself. This time we're going to completely change direction. I want to talk about one of the various villagers that people think might be the wizard's child. Sure, Abigail has purple hair that she hasn't dyed for like the past six years, and she loves to experiment with the occult, and sure, Caroline has a fun relationship with T, but there is only one person, other than the wizard, who knows that this world is full of secrets and magic. Actually, also Mr. Key. Don't worry about that. Emily tells you early in your friendship that the flowers speak to her, and I'm pretty sure it's because she has some forest magic herself. Emily lives at 2 Willow Lane with her sister Haley. The sisters are apparently caring for their parents' house, as those parents have been traveling the world for two years. However, because the dialogue doesn't reference the in-game year, they will always have been traveling for two years, regardless of how long you've been playing. So, if you're just getting to know Emily in year four, her parents should have been around for your first couple of years of gameplay, right? Kind of silly, but probably irrelevant. Unless Emily is secretly manipulating the entire town into thinking that she's Haley's sister and that their parents are coming back someday, when in reality, Emily is a magical being who erased Haley's parents from existence with a magical dance so she could live closer to the forest and secretly leech magic powers from the wizard's arcane tower. And when she tries to erase you from existence with the same dance, your forest magic protects you, forcing her to try to ingratiate herself with you so you can have magic children who will someday control the Ferngill Republic from the shadows, dancing their enemies into the void. But that seems pretty unlikely. I would guess it's a coding thing. Anyway, on the topic of where the heck are the girls' parents, let's take a look at Two Willow Lane. It doesn't seem like it can really support a family of four, at least not as it's currently laid out. There are two bedrooms, a kitchen, a sewing room, and a living room. There's also Haley's dark room, which is not displayed on the map. It's possible that the girls shared a room as recently as two years ago, though presumably they both would have been full adults at that point, which is a little strange. Alternatively, perhaps Haley or Emily or both were away in the city for a while and moved back to care for the house when those parents left. Haley's room definitely feels like Haley, from the vanity to the wallpaper, but, you know, Emily's room kind of doesn't. Sure, there's a sewing project on the table and some desert-themed items like the painting and the cactus, but those could easily have been added when Emily moved in. Easier than wallpaper, at least. Although, actually, in a world where you can carry an entire bed in your backpack, interior design might not be as difficult as I'm making it out to be. Either way, it seems like Haley might have been living at home with her parents, while Emily maybe returned to take care of her when their folks left to travel the world. Which also makes sense from a maturity and financial aspect. Emily works to put food on the table, and Haley... complains? If you want to be the Emily to my Haley, make sure you subscribe to the channel, like the video, and somehow creatively include the burger emoji in a comment. It's really the only way YouTube is going to know that people watch the video. I swear. I don't make the rules. So Emily is the breadwinner of the two, and she works for Gus at the saloon every night. And I mean every night. She works a pretty heavy schedule. She's there from about 4 p.m. to about 12.30 every single day of the year except for two. Sandy's birthday and winter 15th when she visits the night market. That means she spends more time working than Pierre, Marnie, Clint, or Robin. Emily is absolutely drowning herself in work, and that's just what she does to pay the bills. Her real passion, she'll tell you, is tailoring. Listen, my passions are things like playing games and making content. I also like D&D, travel, hiking, cooking, reading, and board games, in case you were wondering, but a lot of the time I'm exhausted by the time my day ends. I can't imagine having two days off in an entire year and having any passion at all for anything. Good on you, Emily, for wanting to support your household and stay busy, but like, take a break, okay? Gus can handle it. In her heart scenes, you can find that Emily sees the world a little differently from other people. From the very beginning, she's a bit... Eccentric, I guess, is the best word. You can break into her dreams in her two-heart scene, forcing her to acknowledge that there's something special about you. I don't want to say she's a magical being made of forest energy with a hunger for more power, but it is strange that her dreams have a physical presence that the player can enter. As much as people talk about Abigail or Caroline being the wizard's child, this is the first time we see something truly otherworldly occurring with a villager. 
And don't tell me about Caroline's tea ritual. That's just some special tea, if you know what I mean. She and Pierre both have a love for some substances. At Four Hearts, Emily sees a migrating flock of parrots and calls them friends. It's cool that this scene has some foreshadowing of Ginger Island for us now. There used to be a different, but still strange, scene at Four Hearts. Anyway, we see a parrot injure itself and Emily tries to nurse it back to health. This is a nice scene, but so far all we know about Emily is that she has weird, extra-dimensional dreams and that she cares about animals more than anyone in town except maybe Linus. Still though, compared to some of the early heart scenes that we've talked about, Emily seems like a strong marriage candidate so far. She's kind, quirky, and hardworking. It's always a surprise to me that the community doesn't seem to have strong feelings about her. I get that she's pretty out there, but she seems like a really solid partner. At Six Hearts, Emily attempts to send you to the Shadow Realm with her patented forest magic dance. Doesn't work, of course, because you've already been exposed to the wizard's magic. Okay, sorry. That's probably not what's happening, but it's strange that she's like, check out my dance. Okay, that was fun. Thanks, Emily. This is such a weird, but very intimate heart scene. It's also really funny that this used to be her four heart scene. <laughs> You might think that this one doesn't provide a lot of insight into her character, but I think it's showing that Emily is a person who has a lot of talent, a lot of passion, and a lot of things she wants to do. What she doesn't have is anyone to share all those things with her. Unless you count Clint, which she doesn't, so neither will we. Bye, Clint. I mean, she visits Sandy once a year, but other than that, she's kind of a loner. I think she's kind of looking for a kindred spirit, and since you're a person who lives off the land and puts effort back into both nature and the community, she feels like you are that match. Her eight heart scene reinforces that she cares about the community. She wants people to live up to the best version of themselves and is willing to help them understand not only who they are, but who they want to be or who they could be. And sure, maybe Clint doesn't get the answer he's looking for in the scene, but it's interesting that even he changes his look so much during this heart scene. It kind of shows me that Emily has a good feeling for the community. She knows that a lot of people are holding themselves back from expressing themselves the way they want, and she thinks that everybody should be more free to act that way that they want. This is such a perfect match for the farmer in a community center playthrough, where the goal is to bring everyone together and restore the town. Sure, she's a little different than most of the villagers, but she's got a better heart than nearly any other marriage candidate. Her 10 heart scene, I think, is endearing, but probably tells us the least about Emily as a person. She wants to go camping in the secret woods, which makes sense, but oh no, there's a bear in the secret woods. She probably just wants some maple syrup, but Emily and the farmer jump into the tent to run away. Since you left one of the sleeping bags outside, you have to share a sleeping bag for the night. Oh no. She cuddles up to you, and you'll wake up the next morning at home. That's pretty spicy compared to, say, Alex and his steak, but about on the same level as Sam and his weird hiding your partner from mom sleepover thing. As a member of the community who truly cares about her neighbors, she is about the furthest away from the very hands-off approach of the wizard. So is she really his daughter? Listen, I don't know, but she can teleport you into her dreams and talk to the plants and animals of the valley. Maybe Emily is the wizard's kid, maybe she's not. But I think she stands as a great marriage candidate on her own, even if she isn't. She is a super weirdo, though. What do you think about Emily? Is she too much of a hippie for you? Or do you dig the granola lifestyle? Let me know down in the comments, and I'll see you in the next video.